and just thought I was crazy. But we actually managed to do pretty well. You know, we were playing places like the Bluebird and getting, and, you know, getting a good crowd and the uh, old Ace of Clubs. We, we managed to do okay. And uh, but anyway, Jimmy Lester had to. He was sort of just on hiatus from Webb Wilder. They were making a record, so that's so now he had to go on tour. So that that was sort of the end of uh, that version. That was the Straight Jackets. That was 19, late 80s, 88, 89 maybe. So when Jimmy joined Webb Wilder, the Straight Jackets thing sort of morphed into the Planet Rockers. So I, I got um, I had met Sonny and Bill and those guys, but and that went on for a couple of years and kind of uh, crashed and burned. And I, then I moved around. I moved to Chicago and I moved to Austin. And finally, I moved back to, to Nashville in 1994, and I needed a place to stay. And so I asked Danny Amos if I could stay at his house till I got on my feet, and he said, sure. And so my wife, Melanie, and I stayed with Danny. We, we both got jobs at Phone Lux Records. And I said to Danny, I said, why don't we get Jimmy Lester back over here and play the old songs, you know, the Straight Jackets? And so that's where it came from. And then, you know, what I didn't realize, I thought we were just going to do that for fun. You know, when, when we got back together in 1994, I'm, th- I'm thinking, we don't we already tried that, you know. But Danny Amos, I didn't, I didn't realize it, but he was sort of at a, like a midlife crisis or something. He wanted to really go do something in the music business. He had a pretty good job at the Nashville Now, Nashville Network. So he kind of took the ball and ran with it. You know, we were... He got us to record the, some songs, and next thing you know, we had a record label that's putting the songs out, and next, then we had a, a booking agent and a tour book, and so the whole thing sort of like took on a life of its own, and uh, and we never looked back. I mean, it was crazy because I really thought I, I I wasn't thinking it was going to be a successful band or a career. I just thought, well, we'll do this for fun, you know, once a month. Now I'm looking around for a gig, you know, a real gig or something. <laughs> Itchy Chicken by Little Street Jackets from their debut album, The Utterly Fantastic and Unbelievable Sound of Little Street Jackets. Now, you've played on Conan several times. I, I know he's a big fan of you guys. Yeah, we've been on, I think, at least 10 times. And uh, he's a super cool guy. What you see is what you get. He's super nice. And he's a guitar player. He loves guitar playing. And I remember our, our first time on there, he was walking around while we were kind of rehearsing and stuff. 
with a, like an early telly on and he saying, man, I'd give this all up if I could play lead guitar in a rockabilly band. <laughs> but to give you an idea what Conan's like, when you know Danny Amos five years ago or six years ago came down with multiple myeloma type of cancer and uh, he had to have a stem cell transplant and he was, I mean, really in rough shape. They, in L.A. they did a benefit for him. I mean, they did one here too, but so the one in L.A., I mean, Conan and his band put their time in and did it with us and uh, he Coney came did a song he's a really a really cool guy yeah. you mentioned Link Ray you did a Link tribute record and you, you also did some touring with him with Straight Jackets at yeah. we toured, uh, I think it was 1997 when Link after a, lo- a long time he hadn't toured the States since I can't remember I don't remember ever touring the States except with, maybe with Robert Gordon so in 97 he started touring again and we and uh, we got on the bill on a few shows New York and Philly and we did one in Minneapolis when uh, Tony Andreessen of the Trashman came out and set in. So it was me, Tony, and Danny, and Link did Rumble at the end. So, so but that was a really uh, like a real dream come true for me, man, because Link it was like my guitar hero, you know. And uh, I didn't ever think I didn't even think I'd meet him. And th- over the years, I mean, when you know all this stuff, more stuff started coming up on uh, Norton Records and everything, and it was like, holy cow, man! Like this guy can do no wrong, you know? It's like. Everything he did was it was cool. I thought, you know. So by '97, it was really cool to meet him and tour with him. He told us we, we reminded him of the adventures. But but speaking of Link Ray, I, I had met him when I was 20. When I was 20, I'd moved to California to try to be a songwriter. And the guy I was writing songs with, a piano player, came home from work one day and said, "Hey, I got a gig with this guy, Link Ray." You know. And I said, "Really? Well, get me in the band. I'll be a rhythm guitar." <laughs> I never even heard of Link Ray. I just thought, what a cool name, man. This guy sounds like a flying saucer or something. So next thing I know, I'm in a garage in North Hollywood, with, you know, face to face with Link Ray, and we're playing, and it was a complete racket, man. This is 1973, but it sounded like punk rock music. You know, it was total punk rock. I mean, and I went to his house a couple times and talked, but nothing came of it. I mean, I, I wound up moving back east before uh, a, a, so he was putting a, t- a band together to tour. He had a record on Polydor called uh, Be What You Want to Be, and he was trying to promote that, but uh, I, I moved back before it, it, it materialized. But so this was 73 and nothing happened. Then, you know, in 1980, when I was playing with Tex Rubinowitz, all of a sudden Tex Rubinowitz, like, Link Ray was his favorite guitar player. It was Link Ray and uh, Ivy Rorschach were his two favorite guitar players. And before every show we did, Tex would, would play a, a, a cassette tape of, you know, Link's early stuff, you know. And finally, Link's, uh, or one day Tex said, hey man, let's work up a few Link Ray instrumentals, you know. And I thought, oh no, man, that's really corny, you know. <laughs> I, thought was, I have to admit, that's what I thought. But looking back on it, the reason why I thought it was corny was because I had started out playing instrumentals. You know, my first song was like Walk, Don't Run, you know, and Peter Gunn. So I thought, that can't be cool if I mean, if that's what I started out with and <laughs> doing, you know. But Tex was right on, man. So in a way, Tex Rubinos is sort of responsible for me doing instrumentals. In fact, when we started playing the instrumentals with Tex, we would do Rawhide and Run, Chicken, Run and Jack the Ripper and Baja by the Astronauts. He never came back by the Ventures. That's when I started writing instrumentals. I wrote Rampage and I put a 45 out called Rampage and the flip side was Link's Tale, which was a tribute to Link Ray. And because I took to playing Link Ray like a duck to water, you know, that's what I could do.
That's the tune Link's Tale by our guest Eddie Angel. That version appears on the album Eddie Angel Plays Link Ray. Now, of course, you have a long history with Big Sandy. You know, did some projects with him and seen you play in uh, in his band in Nashville before, too. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Big Sandy. We go back a long time, uh, probably 1990, because uh, the Planet Rockers, our uh, first album was released on an English label called uh, No Hit Records. And Big Sandy's was on that label and Ronnie Dawson and the Kaisers. So, yeah, so we crossed paths like that originally. But nowadays, we share the same booking agent, so that's pretty cool. We'll cross paths like that. But we first did like a 45 with him in like 1996, and uh, we've had him on records. And finally, uh, a few years ago, I don't know how long now, but uh, uh, probably eight years ago, we did a, a record called Rock and Espanol, and, and uh, all rock and roll songs sung in Spanish. And Big Sandy sang most of it, and it was produced by uh, Caesar from uh, Los Lobos. And he sang on a few of the songs. But now, you know, we go out and tour once in a while with, with Big Sandy. And it's, it's a lot of fun, man. He's a great singer. Jam and James Riley, and you're tuned to the Rockabilly and Blues Radio Hour. We just heard the tune Calor, the Spanish version of Slow Down. That's Low Straight Jackets with vocals by their friend Big Sandy. Our guest this hour is Eddie Angel. You've had some great collaborations with other artists and nominated for Grammy 2004 Best Traditional Blues. 